In this Cineversity Quick Tip, I'm going to show you how to use the ghosting tag to visualize the motion of objects in Cinema 4D. Ghosting is a functionality that is very popular in character animation. and In fact, it typically goes by the name of onion skinning. But in Cinema 4D, we call it ghosting. And it's really powerful because it allows you to visualize the changing poses and keyframes of your character without having to actually scrub the timeline. But ghosting is incredibly powerful and everyone should be using it, not just character animators. The problem is in Cinema 4D, it's a little bit hidden. It's tucked away as an extra tab in the display tag. So let's take a look at how to set up ghosting really quick with this simple project file. I'm going to go on to the Mo text here and add a display tag. And the first thing that you'll need to do is make sure that you're on the ghosting tab and check the enable box, which enables the ghosting functionality. Now, if you don't see ghosting showing up, make sure in your viewport filters that you have ghosting enabled. And it's a good note here to keep in mind that you can turn ghosting on or off for all your objects at once using that viewport filter option. Now inside the display tag, you have options for how the display is actually going to be shown. Here you can see that with the default settings, we're getting an outline of the object and we're visualizing the 12 frames before and after the current frame, but we're only visualizing every third frame. And you can see that you can actually adjust the colors here that are being used for the ghost effect. So we can make that a brighter blue maybe make this a little bit of a yellower color as well. Now, in the draw mode here, you can adjust how the ghosting is drawn. Right now it's using lines, but you can go to something like gross shading or gross shading with lines. A lot of times I like using constant shading and using the x-ray mode, which allows you to fade back the ghosting a little bit. But in addition to object, there's a lot of other modes here as well. You can ghost based on the points, the axis, uh, or you can ghost the trail. You can see the trail right here of the object axis as it moves. Uh, or you can use multi-trail, which is going to ghost every individual point in the object. And finally, there's an option to visualize the velocity of the object. And as you can guess, ghosting is really powerful so that you can visualize how your animation curves are working. So for instance, here on frame 45, I can see that we're almost settling into the final position. If I go in and adjust my F curve, you'll see that that adjusts the actual ghosting display. So I can visualize how that animation is occurring over time. Now we'll go ahead and add a display tag to the extrude object so that we can have some ghosting on our ghost itself. And here again, we just simply need to hit enable. But what you'll notice here is that we're still not getting any ghosting. And the reason for this is that this object is being animated not directly by keyframes, but through a vibrate expression. And anytime your animation is being derived from some form of deformer or expression or effector, what you need to do is use this option to calculate the cache for ghosting. So I'm going to hit the calculate cache button. It's going to happen really fast. And now we have a cache of the current vibrate tag settings. And we can visualize those here in the viewport as well. And again, you can go in and tweak the modes however you'd like. Now there's other options here in the ghosting tag to limit the range, to use the actual keyframes, and to set custom frames. And you can add different colors to all of these various options. So I hope you'll experiment with ways that you can use the ghosting functionality in Cinema 4D both to optimize your animation workflow and maybe create some cool looks in the Cinema 4D viewport. Now keep in mind that the only way to actually render the ghosting effect is with the Cinema 4D hardware renderer. But also, the hardware renderer keeps getting better and better with each version. It had some great enhancements in release 18. And if you can create a really great looking scene and render it with a hardware renderer, you're going to be really pleased with the render time because it's super fast.
If you enjoyed this quick tip, please like, share, and visit Cineversity.com for more great Cinema 4D tutorials and resources.